Hi everyone and welcome to the All Plane Podcast, where we talk with the movers and shakers that are redefining the future of commercial aviation. As usual, before we start, I would like to remind you that all previous episodes of this podcast, as well as many other aviation stories, are available on the All Plane website, that's allplane.tv, A-L-L-P-L-A-N-E dot TV. On today's episode, done in partnership with Comlux, we welcome one of the top players in the global executive aviation scene. For quite a few years, Richard Gaona was president at Airbus VIP Aircraft Division. That is, the part of the European aircraft manufacturer that basically takes Airbus airliners and convert them for executive use. So they turn them into private jets, large private jets, and they sell them to corporations, governments, and also ultra high net worth individuals. So during his tenure at Airbus, Richard surpassed by a wide margin even the most optimistic sales goals that Airbus had set for this part of the business. Richard even managed to sell a VIP version of a giant A380 aircraft. That project didn't come to fruition at the end, but it gives you an idea of the sort of business deals that Richard was involved in. Nevertheless, in 2007, Richard left Airbus to join what was then a young executive aviation company based in Zurich, Switzerland, Comlux. Today, Richard Gaona is the executive chairman and CEO of Comlux, which has become a major player at the very high end of the corporate aviation market. Comlux is one of a kind, and not just because it operates some of the largest and most luxurious executive jets in the world, but also because of its vertical integration, and the way it offers a one-stop shop for the extremely demanding and sophisticated executive jet crowd. From arranging the jet's operations to maintenance, charters, pretty much everything. Richard and his team at Comlux have also been instrumental in the design of the Airbus 220, which is the executive version of the Airbus A220 that is being operated by quite a few airlines around the world. This is an aircraft that, the 220, that has somehow created a new category because thanks to its latest generation technology, the 220 can operate with the economics of a purpose-built business jet, but with the space and cabin interior of a much larger converted airliner. But no one else better to share the latest details about this aircraft program than the driving force behind it. So without further ado, let me welcome Richard to the podcast to talk, of course, about the 220, the first of which, by the way, entered service earlier this year with Dubai-based Luxury Hospitality Group 5, an aircraft, by the way, that is operated by Comlux as well, but also to get some insights about the very exclusive but also fascinating world at the very high end of the executive aviation market. Hello, Richard. How are you? Hey, good morning. I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. What about you? Great to hear that. Yeah, pretty well as well. Thank you so much for being here today on the podcast. I know you're a super busy man running a, a global aviation business that we're going to discuss now in detail. Just before we get into the nuts and bolts of Comlux, uh, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Uh, you are the executive chairman and CEO of one of the most prominent players in the executive aviation world. Comlux, which is a company, is a diversified, vertically integrated operator. You operate jets, you do cabin refittings, you broker aircraft, um, you do lots of different things. I'm I'm really curious to learn more about, about your professional background, how you got into this world, and, and then we can maybe talk a little bit about the company and some of the very interesting projects that you are currently leading, like the Airbus 220, the executive version of the of the A220 airliner converted into executive jet. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, let's start by uh, talking about who is Richard Gaona and how you ended yeah, up in, so... in this world. <laughs> Yeah, so as uh, probably you understand by my name, I'm a, I'm a Basque origin person. My family is from the Basque country. Okay. And um, and then uh, I'm a French citizen, so I have a French passport, and I have only one French passport. And then I've been starting my career at the design office of uh, Aerospatial in Toulouse, which is now called Airbus France. And I spent about maybe seven years in the design office until the moment the company uh, uh, Aerospatial identified me with other people as uh, potential people to have a career in Airbus headquarters. So I joined the Airbus headquarters and then I have been working in different, I would say, department and was probably part of my education. And I work on program, I work on procurement, I work on um, many things. 
And then when Airbus decided to launch the uh, Airbus corporate jet um, program in 1989, I think, um, I was appointed as the first boss of the ACJ program. And then um, I was, uh, in fact, my my um, obligation with my management was to make sure that we will be selling four aircraft per year during 10 years. This is what my CEO at that time uh, told me, and Noel Forjar. And then uh, eight years later, I left uh, Airbus after the sale of the first A380 VIV VIP to Prince Al Walid. Uh, Min Talal, Al Saud, and uh, from Saudi, and then uh, my team and, and myself, we sold 120 planes. So in eight years, we multiplied by three the number of aircraft to be sold. Mm-hmm. And then I had uh, among my clients, I had Comlux, was a very young company because the company was created in 2003. And then uh, there was a dynamic in this company which I like. And um, in Airbus, I was only able to sell aircraft, and uh, in Comlux, I'm able to do interiors, charter flight, uh, transactions, everything. So I was proposed to join Comlux by, by the shareholders of Comlux. And I presented this model that is still exists in Comlux, which is we start by um, any kind of business, maybe by the charter, then the charter clients wants to buy an aircraft, we help him to buy the plane. If the aircraft is made a big one, then we have to we can do the interior for him in, in Indianapolis. And then once he flies a plane, maybe for three, four, five years, one day he wants to change, and we help him to replace the aircraft, to resold the old one, to sell the to sell the new one. So when I joined Comlux in November two thousand seven, Comlux was thirty five employees, and uh, we were operating six aircraft today. The company is um, is about 600 people. I never know because uh, we have always hiring there and there, and, and, and I'm not following anymore the, the details. But uh, And then we operate 25 plane, and we have a build-up in between a facility in Indianapolis, which can accommodate uh, five A220 or one A380 or one 747. We have been doing a lot of first of something. We have been doing the first Neo cabin, A320. We have been doing the first Max 8 cabin. And we have been doing the first uh, uh, 220 aircraft that we delivered this year. Mm-hmm. So you you told me at the beginning you are very busy. In fact, uh, my job is to make sure that I'm working with the best guy around me. And if I, I am the right position, the right person, then my life is much more simple. Once I give it to them, I can do something else. Yeah. So I am, I am extremely lucky around me. I have a management team, which most of them are 10 years plus in the company. And uh, we were celebrating this year already the 20 years of uh, life of Comlux. And now I think it's important to, for me to make sure that everything we have built up continue to be uh, in, in good condition and transfers responsibilities and power to the young generation that we have in the company so with the help of maria we are we are creating young talent program where we are trying to find guys who have a potential we we train them during a year and some of them are already since we start three years ago some of them are the chief of production in indianapolis or the general manager of malta so they are guys who are really been selected properly because they they were able to get more and this is my 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 goal yeah actually you mentioned quite a few locations because comlux has a really like a global footprint your headquarters is in in zurich in in switzerland yeah. and but you have operations in indianapolis as you mentioned a, a completion center in in malta in in kazakhstan i think in in, in many different yeah. different places around the world because this is obviously a global global industry and what I find really interesting is that, I mean, there are many companies operating in executive aviation, but you operate in a very, in a very unique segment. And that's, let's say, the, the highest end of the market, the largest executive jets. We are talking here about airliner conversions, ACJs and, and BBJs, which are the same airliners that uh, regular people fly with, uh, but yeah. just instead of having 150, 190, uh, 210 people, they are pretty to to carry a small number of people in all sorts of comfort 
Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a very, very niche niche market. I'm, I'm just curious, what is the dynamic in this market? I mean, you operate, obviously, with very high net worth individuals, with governments, with um, corporations, sports teams as well. Yeah. Um, so what are the, the marketing channels in this world? Because I guess that's a very, rela uh, very relational business. Yeah, you have to go meet people, show them the planes. I'm, I'm, I'm really intrigued by this. Well, in, in, in reality, we, we are doing, to try to make it simple, we are doing everything the airline don't do. Mm -hmm. So we are not a, a scheduled flight operator. We are non-scheduled flight operator. And then you can imagine any kind of uh, different clients. But, but as you said, the corporations, the, the, the private individual and the government are the three, I would say, main uh, activity that we are doing and once the aircraft is owned by one of these for example corporation or an individual some of these aircraft are available for charter and when it open to charter then then we transport sport team we transport um, delegations uh, to official meetings for example right now we are we are going to fly uh, from end of this week to um, New York for the United Nations, and we are flying head of state with a bigger plane, but we are flying all these kind of um, uh, event. And then uh, sometimes it can be a government chartering the plane because they are missing one, or because they have a uh, too big aircraft and they want to take a smaller one to go to this. So we have been flying even for the White House for flying them, you know, going to Asia. So we are any kind of, of different uh, client, but. My vision has been always that, first of all, in, in, in this market, I am used to say you are moving quickly from the sun, beach condition to the cold, rainy conditions because the markets are always going up and down. And I remember when we, we got the COVID, the company was doing very well. And when the COVID arrived, I, I was saying it was two of my um, top guys were back eight, some matter of three months. The three months became six. And then uh, from March 2020 till uh, 1st of July 2021, the big aircraft were in our fleet. They were not flying at all because countries were blocked. So you could fly only inside the, the, the country where you was privately, but you could not fly abroad because nobody wanted to take people. They were scared that you bring COVID. And interestingly, we made a decision in the company to keep everyone. We reduced the salary of everyone, starting by myself. And, and then from 1st of July to the end of the December in 2021, we made a turnover, which was bigger than 2019. Why? Because we were having crew ready. They were so eager to fly. Everybody was really trying the, the best to survive. And then, uh, and then we passed the crisis. And then every time, and this is one more example that you have to be, and this is my always my vision, you have to do diversification. You have to do diversification in locations and markets where you are working. There will be always a place in the world, unfortunately, which will be in trouble. There is a war, there is, I don't know, economy is bad. Or, you know, when there was COVID, China was closed, for example. I mean, so you have to be in multi, in different places. Second, you need to have different kind of services that you're offering, because sometimes one activity is working better than the other. And then it's good to have some income coming that you can use there. And ne next time they will be the one contributing. So I'm used to say, come luck, there is a fridge and everyone has to bring food because mm -hmm. when you are hungry, you have to go open the door and you get something. But it's the obligation of everyone as well to feed the fridge. Yeah. And you... the third thing is is the, the product that you are doing. We, because I was Airbus, I'm, I'm used to be, people believe we are sometimes Airbus plan B. and and But we have... A lot of aircraft from from Boeing, from Bombardier, from I mean we are Bamber. I mean we have we have different aircraft, so we are not I would say um, 
just doing one line of product and only this one. It would be too risky if the market doesn't work that we are just with big aircraft and not small aircraft. So you need to have small aircraft, middle size, big aircraft. And then and then all the way you cross. And last but not least, you need to have, and I strongly believe in this, I have learned that when I was working at Airbus, when you have an international team in the company, you have always someone who understands better the culture of the client because you don't do business the same way. So in Comlux, we are, I don't know, maybe Maria can tell me, but I think it's 35 to 40 different nationality at least. And that is, is an asset for the company. It's a strong asset. The employees are very strong assets. So when you are a small company like we are, and I like to keep the startup, I would say, spirit, you have to encourage new people, new ideas, and always question if what you are doing is okay or you have to change it. Yeah, but- actually, you touch a, a, a very important point that I had here in my notes to to ask you next. Uh, and that's actually the diversification because one thing that... Um, really caught my eye when reading about Comlux is that you are a, let's say a, a vertically integrated company that you do pretty much, you cover the, like the full cycle of services that an aircraft operator needs. You take care of the completion of the aircraft. You also operate the aircraft. You rent it. You can broker this uh, aircraft that might be belonging to to a private owner, but you kind of do the management. You offer all sorts of of services to help the owners manage those aircraft. You offer MRO technical services also to to service these fleets. So it's a pretty well diversified collection of of different activities and tasks, which I guess it possibly has, aside from the diversification itself, I guess it has some advantages as well. Of course, because you you have always, um, once an aircraft exists project, there is always something around which is required by the client. Mm-hmm. If you are not doing it and supporting your client properly, then he will go to the next shop and maybe the next shop will try to convince him that this is not the way it should be. So I have clients and, and many in Comlux who ask us to help them to buy an aircraft we bought the aircraft for them. We bought it probably at a better condition that they could have bought themselves because we are professionals and we can argue and discuss with an OEM. Then we put the aircraft in the completion. Then we fly the aircraft. And then now we do shorter when they are available time. It's, for example, the example of the, of the 220 that uh, we sold yes. to Hotel 5. Mm-hmm. You know, we bought that aircraft ourselves on speculation. We sold it to um, Hotel 5. We did the cabin. They customized the cabin with the clients so you could choose the colors and so on. And aircraft came into service. And now we are flying the aircraft for them. And when they don't have the, the, the need of the, of the aircraft, we're doing shorter. And because this aircraft is in Dubai and Dubai is becoming a strong place for business aviation in, in the Middle East, then uh, we are now building an hangar in, in, in Dubai because if we want to do some aero activity, some activities cannot be done outside even if the weather is good because you have to be inside the hangar. So that's why we have a hangar and we will offer as well parking for these people because, you know, it's in summer, it's very hot and then aircraft don't like if they don't fly a lot to stay on ground doing nothing. So we cannot do everything. We don't do FBO, for example. We don't do, I don't know... Um, travel uh, agency uh, company, but we have our own, I would say, commercial team doing all the shop commercial charter ourselves. And if you, you can have, if you are in my position saying, okay, I'm going to buy that service instead of having people as overhead in the company. But when you are buying too many services outside, you are, you are no longer controlling the quality of your, of your services. And in our job, our customer in particular the one who are wealthy, they expect that is not an option. It's part of what they pay. So many times they are not telling you thank you is very good. But they if it does not work, in general I receive the call myself because they said I'm gonna call Richard. But for example, our crew are trained to understand that the people who are paying their salary is it's not me. It's these people. Yeah. So they, they they have I know guys in 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 Dubai the team who is in Dubai flying several aircraft. They they are extremely customer oriented. 
if they know when they receive the passport, if they see that one of the passengers has, I don't know, a birthday date at the moment we are flying, I am sure the crew will buy a birthday cake and will put flowers and decorate the aircraft for this kind of event. It's not much, but these kind of details are making the difference. Yeah. Excellence is within details. Yeah. Everybody can be good. To yeah. be excellent, it's a, it's a, it's a mindset. You know, if I go to see a client, I went to see people lately who are in the fashion business and with one of my, my um, colleague, we said, how do we dress? We dress normally like businessmen or we dress like they, and finally we said, look, we are not in fashion business ourselves. Let's be uh, like we're supposed to be. So we arrived with a suit and the white shirt. We did not put the tie because we said maybe it's too much. But, and they were dressed like fashion, but at least we respect them. If I would like to come with sneakers and jeans because I believe this is what I should be, I believe I will not be in my role. My role is to sell high quality services. And because sometimes they're expensive, then I have to give them the top quality service. Yeah. And I imagine uh, your, your customer base are really used to uh to they hope they come to expect like really really the highest end of service because obviously yes. you you operate at the very very high end of of this market Absolutely. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so it's too. like the, the 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 top of a very select market already um so you are a sort of like a one-stop shop for people yes. that that need to operate a uh, private aircraft and and not any private aircraft i mean as we mentioned uh, you operate uh, different models but most of them are some of the most uh, most luxurious and most exclusive air- private aircraft that exist out there because of because of the size i just make a note here it's possible to see some of these interiors in a piece I did for CNN a few years ago where um, you actually yeah, assisted with uh, some of the images and, and comments for that article, which I, I really appreciate. You operate different types of aircraft, but there's one I think that is, is very dear to you, one where you've been instrumental, I think, in, in its creation and its its definition, and that's the 220, which is basically the Airbus A220 ACJ. What can you tell us about this aircraft, which I think it's it's been quite a thing in this world of executive aviation, because you are creating a sort of a new category, I think, uh, something in between the purpose-built private jets, jets like the Goldstreams, for example, or, or the Bombardier Global, and then the larger jets like the 737 BBJs or A320s, uh, ACJs or, or even larger aircraft. So something in between that offers the, let's say, the space of a converted airliner, but with the economics and the performance of a purpose-built private jet. So what can you tell us about this? Maybe you can explain it in a more clear way because I, I yes. might not be using it the, the right words to define it. But the idea is that you create something in between that combines the best of both worlds, yeah? Yes, you know, um, the story of the, for Comlux, the story of the 220, uh, first of all, you, 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 I'm sure I've seen that we call it 220 and we don't. Yeah, as written in, uh, in, uh, yeah, in letters. I mean, on 220. In letters. Uh, um, like yeah, the A220, exactly. Airbus, so, Airbus, Airbus writes it in numbers, like all the Airbus yeah. aircraft, but you have chosen a specific marketing uh, approach, which is to, to name it 220 in letters altogether, 220. Yes, absolutely. And um, the story starts, in fact, uh, so Comlux has, has a lot of Bombardier in the fleet, so we are uh, we know very well the people in, in Montreal. And um, when the 220 was called the C-Series, before Airbus acquired them, we had um, discussions with Bombardier was trying to make an aircraft to compete with Airbus and Boeing. So they came naturally to us and say, you are our clients, we have a good relationship with them. And they say, what about we work together and you guys do the cabin and you do uh, these interiors. So we said, interesting, we're interested to do it, but you have to, um, we have to make sure first that the aircraft are very good performance on, on this market. And then we start to discuss with Bombardier in terms of uh, range, in terms of uh, flying altitude, in terms of uh, 
um, all system which are inside and in reality the the 220 and the c series and 220 is an aircraft which is extremely modern really modern it's a lot of things have been replaced by software everything is integrated all together and components which have been done on this aircraft are a lot of uh, components are um, composite so impact of corrosion is much less much less on this aircraft than than uh, on the border plane which i know and last but not least because this aircraft is is equipped with engines which come from the 320 size aircraft the engines are extremely efficient for this type of product in terms of fuel consumption it's about 20 25 percent less fuel consumption than a 320 or 737 so when it comes to fly 10 hours and you save 25% fuel every hour, either it costs less money to you, but on top you can go further because you are, your consumption is, is much less. So this aircraft, we said, okay, we'll put fuel tanks and then we'll try to make an aircraft flying guaranteed 12 hours. And we say that, and the 12 hours in business aviation is, is a kind of uh, ceiling in my opinion. You can have 15 or 16, but the number of time you will fly 15 hours will be extremely low number. So some competitors say, oh, I can fly 16 hours, I can fly 17 hours. Yes, you can. <clears throat> you can have a car which can go 280 kilometers, but you will never be able to use it. It's about the same. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and therefore, once this was defined, then I read in the press that Abbas bought the Cesare. And I said, okay, my friends from Toulouse will call me soon. And this is what happened. But what was at that time called me and said, you did not tell me you did a project with Bombardier. I said, well, I'm not working for you. Hmm. So I said, let's do it with Abbas. I said, okay. And then we spent some time to review everything with Abbas in Toulouse, the people from Toulouse. And then we came to the conclusion it can be an extremely good competitor if you can price the aircraft properly and you can stay in the $80 million more or less target. So one new 220 aircraft, the price tag, the catalog price tag, we know that later there are negotiations and all that, but it's around $80 million, yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's around $80 million. And then mm -hmm. it's, it's very close to the price of the the traditional business jet, their biggest product. Yeah, the purpose-built business jet. But exactly. what you offer your pitch when presenting this aircraft is that it costs similar to a purpose-built business jet, but you have the space of a large business jet, meaning yeah. a converted airliner, an ACJ yeah. or a DJ. Yeah. You have about three times the volume inside the cabin than what you will get in the traditional business jet, the bigger one. Three times. Yes, the volume. Uh -huh. But the footprint, and this is where it is very interesting, the length of the aircraft and the wingspan is about the same, very close, than this aircraft. So you take the same space on the floor, but the tube is bigger. Yeah. And as long as you can fly 12 hours, then you can say, okay, would you like to fly and... and you know, me, I always say there is no bad aircraft or good aircraft than the other. If you fly two people, and of course, you don't need a lot of space. But I am, a lot of my clients now are, are people who are in, in the 50s. They have kids who became teenagers. The teenagers are coming with a friend on board the plane. And then suddenly there are 12 people. Yeah. And you cannot put these 12 people with a bag in, in another competitor aircraft. It's too narrow. You can, but I mean, it's less comfort than business class with the airline. This is, I would say, the, 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 what makes the 220 a new player. Because if you would be buying the ACJs and BBJs, you talk more a budget of 110 to 120 million. And this is a huge difference, 30 to 40 million. It's a huge difference in terms of price. So when you reduce the price, you enlarge the database of potential customers. And price and I guess the operational cost as well is different because of all these new technologies okay. that, that uh, brings okay. on board, yeah? 
for example, the, the 220 is, is an aircraft which is a lot of composite and you do the first seat check after six years. On the other plane, you do after two years. The cost of maintenance of this aircraft is extremely low because the fuel consumption is, as well, much lower than the bigger plane. Then you make an aircraft which is in terms of operating cost is about the same than the other one, but with more reliability than they have because the aircraft who are designed by Airbus and Boeing are designed or I'm rare, they are designed for the airline market to fly 60,000 hours at the rate of 4,000 hours per year. So you need to make really reliable aircraft, otherwise you have all the clients which yeah. are, I would say, complaining and then you cannot survive. You know, mm -hmm. this is the... So of course it's a new aircraft, but since 2018, I was checking the numbers yesterday, they sold 800 planes. Yeah. Which private jet OEM is going to sell that? Tell me, none. You know, a yeah. program of, of an, a traditional business jet, if they do 400, 500 planes, it's a big success. So when you do 800 and you have delivered 300, the reliability of all these aircraft is going to be better and better and better and better. And when you have a program, what is important is on an airline program is who is buying. So the, the 220 has clients like Delta, like Air France, like Qantas, like Air Baltic, like Swiss Lufthansa. Yeah. Uh, and we then gonna... they are ordering more. They have been placing order and they are ordering more. So me, when I, I am dealing with a client, I say, do you think Delta would buy more aircraft than they have today? The same one, if the aircraft would have a problem, they can buy another one if they want. Yeah, for me, when, when you have a derivative aircraft which come from the airline market, you have to look before to buy the, 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 the private jet version, I would say, the corporate jet version. Look how many aircraft have been sold and to who. So the 220 is a pretty new program. I think the first delivery was in 2018. And uh, the aircraft, uh, and then they have sold already 800 planes. I, I was on the delivery of the first C-Series 300, which later became the A220-300, to mm -hmm. Air Baltic in, in Riga. And we had a, a chance to have a flight over Latvia uh, mm -hmm. from Riga to Riga just to try the new aircraft that was just delivered the, the previous day. It was uh, yeah. really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So in me, I, 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 I'm living in Zurich, so I'm flying with Swiss on 220 a lot because they, they, they use a lot of the aircraft over there. Indeed, yeah. So, yes, it's a new program. Yes, needs uh, the, the product support uh, probably is not as, as developed than uh, for all programs. But me, when I see uh, Delta renewing an order and I see uh, Qantas doing the same, I said, if these people are doing it, they're very competent, should be for a reason, right? So yeah. for me, the platform is good. So once the platform is good, let's make it happen. And we also, we took the aircraft in uh, April this year, and then we flew more than 300 hours with the first one, and, and I touched wood, we never had any problem. It's perfect, fine. If I may ask you about um, a specific input that Comblax is, is bringing into this program, you participated in the definition of the of the executive, cabin. Yeah. Of the executive version of the 220, so the 220. Yeah. And you also have been, you have ordered the first uh, 15, is that right? No, what happened was, so when Airbus was looking for that program, yes. to launch this program, we agreed uh, to be the risk sharing partner what does okay. it mean it means we are finance with our own money all the the non-recurring cost of an engineering of the cabin okay at risk because if they don't sell it's our problem and Are in you... exchange we have in fact is 15 and now it's even 17 we have the first 17 playing cabin sorry will come to us because we 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 have been doing that that decision it's an Airbus product it's Airbus we're selling it and the same way Airbus was listening to us when we were defining the aircraft on what we need, they are doing the same with any clients. And then we are customizing when the client wants something more, we don't have. 
if it makes sense, we, we will do it. So Airbus is leading the, 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 this okay. activity. And these 17 first to 20s are going to be fitted at your center in Indianapolis. You have a, an engineering and, and fitting center in, in Indianapolis where you do all the cabin interior completion, right? Yes, we do that. In fact, what we did, we, we designed the cabin uh, on 3D design completely. Okay. You do it in-house, so you have your own designer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. We, have, uh, we do everything in-house. We selected suppliers as well who can do 3D because a lot of suppliers in this industry, they were 2D, now they are more and more moving to 3D. And we have been working with very big, very big name in, 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 in this industry. For example, the ceilings have been done by Nordam, which is a big company in aviation. And then we have worked together to design, to design the, the autoclave and, and the, the toolings which are going in the autoclave for this. Mm -hmm. The most difficult is when you do the first one. And then after you just press, do it, and you get more of that. Mm -hmm. So the second aircraft will be delivered in February this year, put in service. And Comlux will be operating as well this aircraft. The first three, we mm -hmm. bought four aircraft ourselves. Yeah. We sold the plane. And yeah. we are going to um, operate at least the first three. After mm -hmm. we will see, I have okay. to operate more. But mm -hmm. let, let's try, let's see what happens. And the first one, it was present at eBay's in Geneva in, yes. in May. That's the one that you operated on behalf of Five, which is yes. a Dubai-based luxury hospitality group that will use yes. it for its own customers, I guess, clients, for charter yeah, flights. Clients, and, yeah. yeah. So that's, again, the another aspect of your business model that we mentioned is that you operate on behalf of people that own the aircraft, but you do the actual flying. I think you provide the crew as well. Is that right? Yeah, we provide the entire crew. So it's an off-the-shelf the... off -shelf solution. You you want they, to have an aircraft. Say, and we we comes provide to, for them everything. Yeah, they can come to you and you provide everything. You don't need to worry about yes. all the operational... Yeah complexities no. of uh, owning and operating an aircraft okay yes we are we are doing the camo ourselves the engineering ourselves mm -hmm. we are doing the flight operation ourselves we're requesting all the flight plans mm -hmm. we are doing everything in house it's a small organization uh extremely efficient they work 24 7 mm -hmm. i think the company and i want don't have the exact number but i think we are doing something like 3500 flight per year Mm -hmm. We not do. We are not doing two a week. We are the aircraft are flying. I mean, they have to fly, and for that you need to have the right people. You need to have the right software. You need to upgrade the software. You need to to be sure that uh, you are following the maintenance properly. That you put the aircraft on main, for maintenance on time. That your crew are doing the proper training and renewal of the training, and all this is organized by Complex Finance. Okay. And what next for Comlux? I mean, you are now the the 220 has been a bit your your flagship project, I think, in the in these last few months, even years. Yeah. Um, well, I, is this continue to be the focus? What, what what's next? What's ahead? And well, and, yeah. first of all, uh, we uh, as you know, we are going to uh, we will have a new hangar facility in Dubai, probably at the first quarter next year. Should be finished in December, but. The time to put in service will take probably two, three months. So from Dubai, we will have a an, an, uh, location where we can support more our clients and to do some line maintenance, some AOG service, and so on. That's, I would say, for the airline business, this is what we're going to do. In Indianapolis, we have three lines of business. We have the 220, which is one line. We have the what we call the VIP line, where we do ACJs and BBJ. And we have another line of business, which is called Comlux Tech, which includes the MRO, the maintenance, and the upgrade. And something interesting on this aircraft, the, the Boeing and the Airbus, is that these aircraft are designed for 60 to 70,000 flight hours life. This is what we call the design service goal. A private jet operator is flying 500 hours in general, maybe 1,000. So you count, the aircraft could have a life of 60 years, 60 years, okay? So what happened with this aircraft? The aircraft is maybe 10 years old. He has flown 10,000 hours or less. In terms of aircraft, he's a baby. Could fly much more. 
And then in terms of equipment inside the cabin, the technology is changing so fast that you have one day you have to upgrade the cabin with new equipment. Give you a simple example. Before you have your phone, you was you will needed a plug in the aircraft to, to charge the battery of your phone. The 220 has no longer the system because all these phone, you just put them on a place and then it's charging automatically. Okay. The, the, the customer are saying, can I have this instead of the plug? So what happened in general, when the aircraft is 12 years old, there is what the big maintenance check called the 12C, and the aircraft will go for maintenance, and this maintenance will require that we remove the entire cabin and check that there is no corrosion, that there is no LRU, which are damage, or, or not working, and so on. And we try to combine that with an upgrade of the aircraft at that time for the client to want to change. So in general, what we do now, we change the, the, the internet because today, you know, you, I'm used to say uh, you lose an engine is okay. I mean, it does not work. But if you don't have internet, you are AOG. You are no go because nobody wants to go now on, on a plane and not to have internet. And today, the, the, the internet system, which exists on the aircraft, not only on the Airbus, but the, the, the latest aircraft on the market, is as fast as the one you have at home, sometimes even better. So uh, when the clients, and this is normally how it happens, one client has a plane and the aircraft starts to be aging, eight, 10 years old, then he sells it. The new one comes, he buys the second hand and he said, let's change the cabin a bit. They change the carpet, maybe some varnish has to be changed, the leather of the seat is replaced, we put internet, we put some, I would say, this uh, charger for an iPhone or something else noise and then so this business with that it's it's um upgrade services it's something that we are doing so for us what we want to do is to continue to have for diversification reason all these three lines continuing to work and maybe uh myself or other people will lead the next 10 years of comlux will say okay now it's time maybe for us to do an, another location maybe to do in Asia, or maybe to do bigger in Indianapolis, or maybe to do in the US, in, I don't know, in Florida, or in, I don't know. That's the next step. If you don't progress, you are moving back. So yeah, you I have think. always to have a wind of development, not a wind of happiness and say everything is okay, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I know some of my competitors, they come from the MRO fuel tank business, but they, they, they are unable to design and certify the cabin. So I am the opposite. This is secondary. This is basically this. Yeah, I, I would like to um, just wrap it up by, by asking also about the future of the executive aviation industry in general. What is your vision? It's an industry that has got a lot of growth. It's also now a bit in the eye of the hurricane with uh, all the sustainability concerns, but at the same time, whole regions of the world are developing economically really fast. So how all these different forces, you think, balance each other? Uh, what's your vision for, for, let's say, the next 10 years of this industry? My, my opinion is that after COVID, more and more corporations are ready to have private jets because they want to fly among themselves. And then that trend will not be stopped. Regarding the sustainability, aviation in general is doing an effort everywhere. I think it's a bit unfair to, to target just the aviation because there are so many other industries which are much, much more polluating. We represent the business aviation, 0.002. But we can improve and we will improve that. And for example, and therefore, the next generation of aircraft and the 220 is part of that already, will have to have less fuel consumption. And if you take the example of Five, it's a company which is very much oriented sustainability. They have taken a plane which is much less fuel consumption than the others, but as well, they're on top, they are buying carbon tax credit for what they fly. So you come, it comes a moment, you cannot go further. I mean, you have to put fuel and fly. I mean, it's maybe in 50 years, we will have another, another energy than fuel. But for now, I think the next 20 years, I don't see how we're going to do that. So these people, they made their own decision and they are buying tax credit, carbon, to compensate. And I believe the corporations will get this plane. They will do, all the corporations will do that. 
you know, it's it's people say, okay, it, it will cost me money, but not too much. But at least I, I am helping the planet somehow. I see this moving more and more, but I don't see this moving in two years. This is going to take two decades or three before we have a substantial change. Yeah, we're we're seeing lots of uh, yeah big corporations now investing in into kind of trying to mitigate at least this yeah. this footprint. Just to wrap it up, are you guys Comlux? Are you going to be at N, at the next NBAA? Are people attending NBAA going to be able to see the these two twenty aircraft? Yeah, Comlux will have uh, is going. We will have a, a team over there, a large team. At the booth, we will have in the convention, and Airbus is is shattering the plane for the display aircraft display. So mm-hmm. the aircraft will be on display at the NBAA. Will be the first time I would say the American market will have access to the plane almost openly. But it, this is going to be managed by Airbus, but Comlux will be flying the aircraft there. Yeah. It's the one operated by fi- uh, on behalf of Five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a product to sell by itself because once you enter inside, then you are you are, you are say, "Wow, that's that's nice." And mm-hmm. uh, I'm I'm very good friend with one big CEO of aviation in the world. I cannot disclose his name, but he came at eBay's and he asked me to go inside. And when I show him the plane, he said, "Is that your company doing this?" I said, "Yeah." And I'm proud about my guys because they really did a new product, very modern, very light. I mean mm-hmm. the Performance are amazing. The, the noise level is 48 decibel on inside. The, the fuel consumption is 25% less. And it's modern aircraft. I mean, the, the I was one day doing a test flight the, when, before delivery. I mean, I was on board the plane. I was not testing anything myself. But mm-hmm. I think there were the, the engineers, they were trying to, I think they were putting 20 different iPad walking and streaming at the same time to see if this will affect the speed of the internet. And then everything was working. And I remember we were watching a game, no, Formula One race in flight on the TV, because this aircraft is the only one in private jet who has TV of 55 inch mm. size. And and then uh, you, you it comes a moment you don't anymore think you are in flight. You live you're at home. Yeah. So it's beauty of this aircraft so mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm but gonna... it's not the only thing we have other plane we have you need aircraft for everyone indeed yeah you you have a pretty diverse fleet in any case i'm going to make sure there are some some photos of the uh, the 220 cabin interior in the show notes so that people yeah. can can check it out for themselves yeah. well richard it's been an amazing conversation always great talking with you yeah. and and getting the latest about uh this very very sophisticated and 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 very uh exclusive world of uh, the high end executive aviation and and the very exciting projects you are doing there at Comlux with the 220 and i guess others that will come after that so thank you so much for your time today Thank you very much, Michael. And then don't forget to mention that this would not happen if I would not have around me a very good team because the only thing I'm good is to find good talent. Then I give them the job and they do it better than me. That's that's a great talent to have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. If you like this podcast, you can support us by giving it a great rating on Apple, Spotify, or whichever platform you get it from. And remember, you can, of course, subscribe to it. And you can also get regular updates through the All Plane website, that's A-L-L-P-L-A-N-E.tv. We have a newsletter where we cover the aviation industry every week with a special focus on innovation and sustainability. So give it a go. Thank you and goodbye.